Just, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Martina for the initiative and her crew for putting the whole thing together uh, today and hopefully we'll make uh, uh, some progress in calling out this this scam. Now, in the first instance, what, what we're dealing with in this country, with Mike and Pyrite, Pyrotite, etc., is a humanitarian crisis. And it didn't just happen. I'm going to give you a small bit of background and come back and I'm going to bring you through it and I'm going to offer some proposed, uh, some proposals maybe for solutions. <clears throat> now, the problems with these deleterious materials, they go back a long way. And I see uh, some of my Fianna Fáil friends here and they're not, not going to thank me for what I have to say here. But, you know, the problem... Sorry. <clears throat> As I said, the problem goes back 55 years, and it's down to the toxic relationship, a corrupt relationship between the construction material sector and successive governments, going back to the 60s. <clears throat> this, <clears throat> this has resulted in low standards or perhaps more accurately described as no standards, light touch regulation and zero enforcement. And we, we will later on, we look at who should be paying the price because last year our government, which is very, very good at doing over the years, divide and conquer. Last year the, the government played this ploy and tried to get ordinary taxpayers against victims. And all this thing about the big houses in Donegal and why should we as taxpayers have to go and build these mansions? They were, they were all supposed to be living in mansions. <coughs> so uh, we're, the, the fact is we're, we're all together in this. Now, where, where I think this whole thing has gone wrong, and I'm going to be very candid here because we have to be candid if we're going to make progress going forward. Uh, last June, I think it was June the 15th, there was an enormous uh, protest in Dublin, uh, mostly down to the, to the incredible work of uh, Paddy Diver from Donegal. He put, he put many, many thousands of people on the streets. <clears throat> However, I think the people were somewhat hoodwinked because it has transpired, and I'm open to correction on this, but it has transpired that in the days prior to the 15th of June and this protest, which remember, the protest was for 100% redress. But in the days before uh, the 15th of June, apparently government agreed with certain people, uh, a few members, uh, affected members, victims, that there would be a working group. Now working groups don't work out. We've had them. We had the beef task force when the factories were all being blocked by the farmers. The government set up the beef task force, which was all much ado about nothing. And that's exactly what's going on. I'm not taking away from the efforts of all the people that are putting in all the time. But I'm saying there's a huge naivety out there. This scheme, as they call it, is going nowhere because it can't go anywhere. Because it's not about 100% redress and never was about 100% redress. And while I'm at it, I can't understand why any of the victims, nobody that I have seen has called for compensation. Because in any country in the world, certainly any country in Europe where a disaster like this would happen, not only would victims get their houses rebuilt, whatever needs to be done, done with the houses, in a lot of cases it's going to be full rebuilds, including foundations, but not only that, but each and every victim is entitled to compensation. So why, what are we doing about a scheme? And you know what they're going to do next? They're going to bring in legislation. And we know about legislation. Legislation benefits the rich and it's time he's the poor. You'll all be in a trap because the legislation says this and the legislation says that. You're not within a massive roar of getting 100% redress. This thing has to be completely re-looked at and start from the scratch. And, and, and I would say to politicians, and there's a number of politicians here, guys, girls, we've got a cop on here. These aren't cattle, these are people, these are the citizens of this country that she put up in Dáil Éireann to look after the public interest. And you're not. You're scoring them. And just, just a little word on the discrimination. I mean, the scheme, the scheme. No holiday homes, no farm buildings, no commercial buildings, no second homes unless you're registered. What sort of a scheme is that? 
I mean, if you had a coffee shop down the road or a house out the road, it's all the same thing. You've been damaged. You've been damaged by this corruption and negligence through successive governments for over 50 years. And everybody that has, has a problem with your building, no matter what it is, is entitled to full compensation, including compensation, full redress and compensation. Um, when the Mahan report was published, the famous Mahan um, uh, corruption report, there's a lot of very interesting stuff in it. But Mahan, uh, he said that he found a lot of politicians and business people uh, all involved in, in very serious corruption. And he, Mahan said that these guys, these guys all operated with a justified sense of impunity and invincibility. That's what legislation does. It buries the ordinary people. Legislation. Now, I think I, I, I did refer earlier to the uh, this thing where, where government government really has been choreographing. And if you ask Joe McHugh and Donny Gaudi, Fine Gael TD, and indeed Charlie McConnell, what actually went on before the before June fifteenth? Because that's very important. We went to Dublin for one hundred percent redress. We didn't get it. We didn't get anything. We got a working group. And we've got a working group that is now involved, being choreographed by government. I'm not, I'm not blaming the victims, but they're being choreographed into this scheme. So, guys, ladies, this is going nowhere. Now, just, just in relation to solutions, um, I, I just want to suggest a, a, a couple of small things. Uh, in any other country in Europe, which I referred to earlier, in a situation like this, uh, victims would be able to avail of what they call a class action, a legal action, where all victims could put their name down in, in the one pot, and there's just one single action. They're done in America, they're done all over Europe, they're done all over the world. <coughs> but Ireland has a serious issue with regard to access to justice. We're actually the laughing stock of Europe because the small man can't get justice. Whether he's a farmer, whether he's a pirate victim, or whether he's a small business. So the, the EU recognized this and they brought in a directive in 2020, Directive uh, 1828, which is on uh, representative actions. So that, that, that directive is in place and our government have to have that um, directive in force by the end of this year, by, by December 2022 and up and running by June 2023. Now people will say, but our government never brings in directives when they should, they delay and yes they do. But I mean, if you're not calling for it, and, and, and I would be very critical of the working group here, they have not called for the transposition of this directive into Irish law. Because the minute we have a representative action or a class action, the show is over, the game is over, all victims will be fully compensated, in, in, including, as I keep referring to, compensation for all the heartache and trauma that they have been through. So we need to transpose the European Directive 1828 into Irish law, not next December. We need to do it now. And I have spoken to lawyers and I am speaking with lawyers that are willing to get involved in this transposition process and in setting up a class action. With the class action, what happens is you sign up to effectively and you go home and you get on with your life. And uh, the experts will take it over, not just for one of you, but for all of you, for, for thousands, whatever thousands is involved. The, the other thing that I'd like to read out to you, I think it's quite important, is uh, Article 47 of the EU Charter of Fundamental Rights, which is actually European law. Now this is very important, it's very short. Uh, Article 47, uh, Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union. Everyone whose rights and freedoms guaranteed by the law of the Union are violated has the right to an effective remedy before a tribunal in compliance with the conditions laid down in this article. Everyone is entitled to a fair and public hearing within a reasonable time by an independent and impartial tribunal previously established by law, i.e. a court or a tribunal. Everyone shall have the possibility of being advised, defended and represented. Legal aid shall be made available to those who lack sufficient resources insofar as such aid is necessary to ensure effective access to justice. Now Ireland, have you ever heard of that up in Kildare Street? Because that's the law. That's the law of Europe. 
But why, why have you been run down this cattle crush into, into a scheme that's never going to work? And another proposal, uh, what, what, what I think we need to do is we need to set up a, a, a central office, a, an office that would be probably a sem semi-state type office to to oversee uh, civil projects in this country because we know one thing, we know the department, any of the departments can't do it, they're incompetent, we only have to look at the National Children's Hospital, it is six times over budget, six times, it was originally budgeted at 400 million, it's now at 2.4 billion and, and rising. So that's what's going to happen, we're hearing about 2.2 .2 billion with Pyrite and, uh, Pi and Mike etc, it's not going to be 2.2 billion if we let these people control it the way, in the way in which they're going to go. It's going to be four or five times that. It's going to be 10 billion. The government have to understand there's a huge problem here and it has to be faced up to. And it's going to cost quite a lot of money. It's not going to cost 2.2 billion. It's going to cost a hell of a lot more. But let me tell you, if you go back 10 or 12 years ago, when the poor banks, who had been acting criminally for years and years and years, when the banks went bust, it took the government hours, hours to bail them out. At 2 o'clock in the morning in someone's private house they were meeting and the announcement was made the following morning. So if the banks are that important. What's wrong with the people? Just coming to the end, the end of it now. Um, you know, th there's a lot of lateral thinking as well that's needed. For example, there's a lot of old people around all these affected counties, and maybe they might be considering downsizing. Maybe they might like to go into a little cluster development on the edge of a village uh, for, their, for their latter years. All of this lateral thinking needs to be applied to this current crisis and the best thing done for, for, for everyone. Now, if somebody is, 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 is sizing down, down, downsizing their house, obviously they, 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 they will need to get. Uh, uh, compensation just the same as if it was some, some ordinary folks selling their house and moving into a smaller one. There'd be money left over. So um, I'm getting to the, the tricky bit now. Well, just before that, I, 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 one other thing as well. You know, when these houses have been rebuilt, we should be looking at you know the bare ratings, the insulation standards, all of that, because I believe that people, when they're getting their houses rebuilt, they should be rebuilt to the standards of today, which is the maximum maximum insulation. That's only saving the state. It's saving on CO2 emissions. It's, it's a no-brainer. But I haven't heard that mentioned at all. Um, and I suppose I, w I won't really go on to IS465. Uh, it's, it, it's a scam. It, it's, it's planted in there and it's going to cause mayhem for years to come until the government cop on. Now, who's going to pay for all this? Who's going to pay all these billions? Well, the primary guilty parties, the primary culprits, of course, are the quarries. And their, their associates, successive governments. So the state and the quarries, they're the people who have to pay for this. Now, the insurance companies, the insurance companies seem to be getting out of this scot-free. And there are insurance, and there is insurance within the Irish Concrete Federation to have their own scheme. So I can't understand, because it seems to me that successive governments are protecting all these people, and they're going to make taxpayers pay the bill. And that's not on. And I'll just tell you something now about who owns the quarries. The construction materials... Hello? Yeah. The construction materials sector in this country has been uh, dominated by a company called CRH PLC, which would have been numerous subsidiaries like Irish Cement and Limerick and Roadstone and, and, and hundreds of other subsidiaries. Now, CRH PLC operates uh, a structure, it's a, it's, it's a criminal structure, it's an illegal structure whereby they actually control a lot of the supposed independent producers. So you could be buying your concrete from Johnny Smith down the road, and you think that Johnny Smith has a better price than Roadstone, where in actual fact the two of them are, the two of them are together. They're, they're all under the one roof. Now, successive governments, again, have failed to look into the structures it, it, because there's a mafia in operation in the building material sector. So I say that we need to know who is the ultimate owner? Who are the beneficial owners of all these quarries around the country? And if they have deep pockets, which you will find in a lot of cases they do, they should be made to pay. So that's really all I have to say. Thank you very much, folks.